What's going on, everybody? DK Drama, Burger Gang Sports, and you already know what we're here for. You know what we came to do. We got a lot to discuss, my man. Today, I want to talk about the NFC East. As always, man, it is so much talk going on about who's the better team in the NFC East, who's the better quarterback in the NFC East, Who's the best left tackle in the NFC? Who's the best running back in the NFC? You know what? I come to the conclusion that the answer to that is the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'm going to tell you why. The Eagles are about right now. Now, we could go back into the history of things, and we can talk about franchises, and then, of course, we like, if you talk about franchises, then you bringing up a lot of these old teams that were, you know, kind of doing things when we were kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, it, and, and it's kind of stuck with those guys like 30 years later. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really make sense to me. You can't say you have the better team because you got certain better players. Like, Y'all got to start using your head a little bit more. How can you simply say the Dallas Cowboys are just the best team? Like, what the fuck have they done? <laughs> Excuse my French. But what, what have they done? What have you done for me lately? Please tell me. And if anybody from a shore likes out there, from a shore likes out there, let me know if y'all stay in the tune with Philly 500 and Michael Anthony Where's the fitness? You know, famous words from a man, 5,500. If y'all keeping up with what those guys are doing, Michael Anthony Fitness is making a complete fool of himself. He wearing a mask, think he's some mass wrestler, and he, he honestly think, what I do think is like funny out of all of that, he honestly think he's getting his belt back this year. Nobody, no. <laughs> No, buddy. No, no, no. You lose that belt for another year. For another year. And you'll cut Joe Boo's head off. You'll cut Joe Boo's head off. And you will break your father's heart. Now, I got nothing to do with that. But I got something to do with that. I'm an Eagle fan, man. So I'm riding with my man 5 double O, man. You, I mean, you have to. You have to. I don't see what y'all changed last year that's going to make y'all better this year. I've seen the uh, uh, the addition of C.D. Lamb, which is replacing Michael. No, no, not Michael Gallup. Randall Cobb, I'm sorry. Which is replacing Randall Cobb. But, as we all know, the Dallas Cowboys struggle when beating teams over 500. They struggle. I mean, they, they even broke even at 500. 8 and 8. That's like, they are the kings of 8 and 8. Who are we kidding here? They are the kings of 8 and 8 in the last 10 years. Let's be honest now. Let's be real with yourselves. Because a lot of y'all Cowboy fans are not being real with yourselves. And that's a shame. You can't be real with yourself. Then... You can't be real with the rest of the fan base. Like, everybody looking at these numbers and they're saying, you know, Dak is better, blah, blah, blah. Then why does Dak not have a contract? Why is Skip Bayless saying Dak is asking for too much? Now, he's a, the number one Dak Prescott fan, the number one Dallas Cowboy fan. And Skip Bayless is saying, dude asking for way too much, man. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, it's not even what are you doing. Who do you think you are? Honestly, who do you think you are? I gave Dak the top 10. He probably top 10 quarterbacks. Only because of the 5,000 yards and he, the availability. I don't really see nothing else. It's nothing else. You can't say game-winning drives when he had the ultimate game-winning drive against us for the season. You can't say he's crucial with game-winning drives. You just can't say that. Like, 
We don't see that. All Dallas fans, of course, they're going to see it. But we don't see that. You just can't. You can't say that. Like Now, touchdown to touchdown ratio, okay. Maybe he, he threw, he, he just slung for a couple touchdowns and, and, and less interceptions. But how can you sling for 5,000 yards? Your running back run for a thousand. Come on, man. Your running back run for a thousand. And you break even at eight and eight. I'm confused, y'all. I'm confused. And I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And I need somebody else besides a cowboy fan to explain it. Because I don't got time to hear the biased opinion. Because that's all you're giving me. You're going to give me your opinion being being a fan of the Cowboys and being a hater of the Eagles, knowing that I like the Eagles. So I can get why you're going to hate, but we need some realists in the building, man. We need some realists in the building. We need people who are going to be real about the whole situation. Your quarterback don't deserve that much money. He hasn't shown what he could do with that much money. I mean, every other quarterback that has that much money has a ring, has a ring, contributed to a ring. Call it what you want. You can say Carson didn't play in the Super Bowl. He contributed, he contributed the entire season, the entire season. Do you guys not understand that? Your quarterback contributed 64 games. It hasn't sniffed a championship yet. Uh, division. Division championship. I just don't see why y'all better. The defense looked the same to me. And the defense is what was losing to all of those teams that were 500 and better. What has changed? What has changed? What you got rid of, uh, rid of Robert Quinn? Well, I, do y'all still have Michael Gallup? I don't, I'm not sure if y'all still have Michael Gallup out there. I know Byron Jones is now what one of the highest paid corners in the league. He's gone. Bye bye. Like, what did y'all change? I know Trayvon Diggs. Not worried about him in his freshman. I'm not worried about him in his freshman year. First of all, he got to develop to be an NFL type cornerback before we can even speak on his name. Just like C.D. Lamb. He got to develop into a NFL type wide receiver, which he is very good enough. He is uh, kind of ahead of his time a little bit. I think he's going to be a okay, even though he in the shit field, Dallas. I think he's going to be okay regardless, because playmakers they just make plays, man. That's just that's just what it is, man. But other than that, I see no team in the NFC East beating us. We got the eighth easiest schedule in the league. We can handle that. <clears throat> to me, I honestly think. Now, you can say I'm crazy or whatever, but as of right now, until the uh, the first couple of games, and I see exactly what we got going on, I'm just pretty much making the same assumption as every other YouTube on here, every other content created on here. I'm making the same assumptions. But as of right now, I feel like if we start early and we start things right early and things are rolling, we can beat the 49ers. I seen a couple of guys say that they think that was a loss. I think we can beat the 49ers. I think we will not break even with the Cowboys this year. I think we have a we really do have a point to prove to Dallas. And and, and above all, we got a point to prove to Seattle. Not only because of the hit to Carson in the in the uh, playoffs, but we just can't beat Seattle. Like, I don't know if y'all know it, but when the last time we beat Seattle? Y'all let me know, you know? Like, we just can't beat them. So we really owe them a revenge play. Really, we really owe them a revenge play. So that's just me. That's what I'm thinking. I feel like there's nobody... I'm trying to think. I know we played New Orleans in December. 
Now, the weather has been so crazy lately that we don't know if it's going to be cold, uh, 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 lukewarm, or hot in December. And that's the God honest truth. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's in store. Then we got to see what's up with the coronavirus. But I do think that we can beat those guys, too. I think we got the pieces to, you know, really, really, really get the job done. I think we can beat those guys, man. Drew Brees is getting old. I think he on his last leg. He probably was on his last leg last season, but the love of the game is really keeping him into the game. Just like Tom Brady, which is another guy I'm really not worried too much about. I'm not worried about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at all. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the 49ers and Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens, if you ask me, Baltimore will be our biggest task yet. Is, is trying to contain Lamar Jackson before he can get the ball off. If he tries to get the ball off. Because the dude got wheels. That's To me, that's going to be our hardest. That's going to be our hardest team on the, on the schedule. Like Baltimore because of their quarterback. Other than that, I think on the right day, all the guys healthy, we're really going to mop the floor on a lot of these teams, man. But that's just my opinion, man. Like, like I said, don't take this as this uh, straight fact. This is just my opinion about what's going to go on in the league upcoming. So y'all let me know down below exactly what y'all think and who do y'all think we can beat. As far as, you know, the talking head saying that it was a for sure loss, who y'all think we can beat? Out of those for sure losses, who do you think we can beat, for real? On a good day, with a healthy team that's ready to go. I told you mine. I want to hear yours. And uh, if you're new to the channel, like, share, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. We're trying to get this stuff out of here, man. This your boy, DK Drama, Bear Gang Sports. And I'm out.